and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. And, you know, we live in Florida, and we have our rainy seasons, and we have our issues here. Um, one of the issues we seem to have is that we have a lot of moisture in the air. We're by the water. With me is Jose from Aqua Secrets. How are you doing, Jose? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm good. I would be better if it was like mid, uh, mid-afternoon and I was ready for lunch, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It comes fast enough, believe me. All right, I have to ask you this. So how long have you been in the industry? Well, um, I've been in the industry for 12 years. Right. Um, Aqua Seekers has been around for five years, and um, we're doing well. We're, uh, you got the coolest looking van. Thank you, thank you. That's <laughs> totally wrapped. It, look, it really has got bright colors. It's really, really kind of cool looking. Okay, why did you get into it? I mean, what, what was the, the impetus that made you say, hey, you know what, I want to do this? Well, uh, like I said, I've been in the industry for 12 years, and... Um, I just wanted to help people. I wanted. To, I was really good at what I do, and I figured uh, if I got out there and started my own company, I'd do well. Uh, and I, I wanted to help people for the most part. That was my main thing. Okay. So now I mentioned Aqua Seekers. We know he's been in business five years with the company and twelve years in the industry. What do you do? Well, what we do is uh, when a property owner, uh, residential or commercial, uh, if they ever have a plumbing leak, roof leak, any type of uh, water damage. We come out and extract the water first, uh, and we set up equipment to start drying out the walls, insulation, and the structure. That way, they could avoid uh, further damages to their, costly damages to their property. You know, <coughs> not every time that you have a leak is mold involved, correct? Correct. Okay, so... Do you do the restoration after you're done? Like, and I'm just guessing, and I could be wrong, but you now go to someone's house, they're on the first floor, the second floor leak through the walls, okay, and you see the staining on the walls, okay, right. but it's water travels strange paths, right? Okay, so how do you know if there's moisture in the walls? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what we do is when we get to the property, is we want to find out what leaked. Uh, sometimes they have a plumber already there fixing the issue, mm -hmm. so that'll tell us what caused the leak, and that'll uh, kind of let us figure out, help us figure out how much water uh, has leaked throughout the property. So we use a infrared thermal uh, camera and a professional moisture meter uh, hygrometer as well to kind of test which materials are wet. The camera, what it does, it's uh, it's got a screen, mm -hmm. and it um, it differentiates the differences in temperature. So when materials get wet, they generally tend to be cold, so they show up on the camera pretty easy, and, and we follow where the water went. Sometimes we have to do a little demolition to kind of open up that envelope, get right. some airflow in there, mm -hmm. and then with the dehumidifiers that we put on site in every area affected, it starts the drying process. Okay, so, and then when, you, when it's done, you come back and you patch it up and do you do the, the at, repairs? Uh, at this time, no, we're not doing the repairs. Okay. We generally recommend or, or sub it out if we can, okay. um, or we refer them, you know, to find a contractor of their own, of their choice. If they don't have one in mind, then we do refer somebody that we trust. I mean, I guess leaks can get really, really bad. Yeah. Now, if you leave it, is that when, and we're going to talk to someone who, who's a mold expert in a bit, but when you leave it, does, is that what gives the mold a chance to grow? Right. Um, when you have materials that are organic, uh, or they can absorb a lot of water, like wood, in your drywall and your insulation. Um, after 72 hours, generally, you can have mold growth if you don't have a drying environment in place to start forcing that drying. Okay, so <coughs> you're in the industry 12 years. 12 years ago, they had a ca did they have a camera like you have today? They did. They did. Did uh, they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they used to be bigger. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, remember walking around with like a 20 pound dumbbell. It felt I like. get it because <laughs> the cameras I used to film with were like these big cameras yeah. and now they're much lighter. Thank God because I'm much older. My question is has the industry changed since you started in it? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, technology wise, yes. definitely. Um, there's a lot of tools out there that we use. The, the dehumidifiers, blowers are getting more efficient, um, they're getting smaller, more compact, more stackable. Um, and then also uh, the cameras are getting better at uh, stronger, so you can see the, where the water has traveled a lot easier. And, um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff has changed. Do you see more changes coming in the future? 
Uh, yeah, I guess technology-wise, yes. I mean, technology is changing every couple yeah. of minutes, so we kind of get that. What would make your job easier if you, I mean, let's just say that, I mean, is there something in your mind, because you've been in the industry so long, that would make the job, this job easier? You know, in, in my mind, I go, well, you know what? Got to get inside the wall. I have to take away a sheet of the wall. If I had <laughs> like this blower that I just made a little hole and it kind of fanned out inside, that might make the job easier. Or the smaller the damage that you have to make, the better it is. Now the units have gotten more efficient. Right. Uh, now there are there are tools that you can attach to your blowers. Right. And we do do. Oh, that. okay. One of the one of the things that we do. Uh, not being too invasive on a property to not be too invasive is we remove the baseboards okay. off the wall and we score it take it off and then we inject hoses into that wall cavity into each cavity to get airflow in there to start darn it, it yeah. i could have yeah. patented that if you would if you would have came up with that yeah, you would have like, been a billionaire right yeah, now. <laughs> there you go i'm stupid to buy yeah. you know and it's just something that i was kind of thinking about i'm saying wow okay you come i said look my roof is, my ceiling is leaking, look, it's stained. How do you know if it's still getting water, if it's an old stain? I mean, and how do you decipher what you do there? Especially in a ceiling like this, it's a little easier because you just pull a tile. Right, right. Okay? But what about a ceiling that's like sheetrock? You got to get up there and you got to say, well, it's hard to figure where the water comes because the water makes its own path okay and i believe that if you had a leak if i had a leak in the roof right here it might stain down there right it's possible yeah so yeah. how i mean it let's just take a one-story building something in the ceiling no attic okay. do you get up on the roof and look i mean how do you figure out where the, how do you basically kind of figure out where the leak is we check the interior first with okay. that camera i was talking about oh, earlier right. uh we'll see everything uh on, on if it's wet still We'll see it. Now, normally when people have a roof leak, they get a roofer out to tarp it up. And sometimes we'll do tarp ups too, you know, to seal, to stop the water from coming in. Um, but for the most part, they'll have a roofer come out and tarp it up. And if it's still wet, we'll come inside and take a look, see if it's still wet. And then we can start the drying process that way. <coughs> so I'm going to guess that I have a roof leak. I really... If, just to dry it, it's not going to help me because it's going to leak again. Right. So you really either need to cover it, tarp it, or fix it. Or fix it, yes. But if it's kind of like a double-edged sword because if I don't dry it, I have the chance of it becoming mold. Right. So what what's the suggestion there? Do I, I dry it, then have it fixed, and then have you come back and just re-dry it again? I mean, if you tarp it, I get kind of get it. Yeah. But I, you know, it's almost like I said, a double-edged sword because you don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like, I have a mobile home that I rent out, and I know where the hole is, but the water stain is ten to twelve feet away from where the hole is. And that's because water is going to take the path of least resistance. So if there's an angle on that or a pitch on that building or on a, a truss or a joint, it's going to ride down that line and drip there and stain whatever materials are in that area. Um, so you definitely still want to have it tarped up if you can, because that's a temporary solution. Right. And then once it stops raining, obviously, <laughs> uh, have a roofer come out and do a temporary repair or a full repair if they can, and then continue the dry out process inside. Sometimes once the material has been wet for too long, you want to just go ahead and remove it anyways if you can't salvage it. Our main goal is to mitigate the damages right. before we have to remediate the damages. And it's interesting because, you know, sheetrock, I'm going to guess, is pretty porous and absorbs a lot of water. Right. It has the ability to absorb a lot of water. Yeah. And I, I know from experience, it also has the ability to really stain. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, just because it's stained doesn't mean it's mold, right? Not necessarily, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it'll be stained because of the material on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of the wood tannins wash down and stain that drywall. It happens. So not everything is about the, the dampness is still there. Like if there's an air conditioner in the attic and it dripped a little water and it's stained through, that's not 
like a pipe that burst upstairs and is and is leaked through gallons and gallons of water. Right. I mean, is it so important for me to say, oh my God, I got three drops in the ceiling because the air conditioner, the condensation drip? Is it really important for me to go up there and dry it, knowing that the that it's probably hot up there and it's probably dried anyway? Well, it's still very important uh, because if your AC is dripping or leaking anywhere in the house, then there's an issue with the AC. Uh, it's not running efficiently or there's something wrong mechanically, so you want to have that addressed. Um, and any any type of water, I mean, if it's just a couple drips and you can see it's not soaked, uh, yeah, you can dry that. It'll, it'll tend to want to dry on its own. Naturally, everything has moisture in it already, mm -hmm. uh, and it will naturally try to dry, bring itself back to its natural equilibrium, which is its natural moisture content level. Um, what we try to do is force that environment to dry when there's a lot of saturation so that it does it faster. Um, but if it's a small drip, it's not too big of a deal, but the AC could be a big deal. And if it's sweating in the attic or it's not running properly, then it's not circulating the air throughout the house, which then could cause another problem. That's true. Um, all right, so <coughs> the upstairs tenants, dryer, washing machine leaks, and then it comes down my wall. And I got staining in my wall. How long? So you come in, you start the, dry, the drying process. Right. How long do you leave your equipment there, basically, until it dries out? And it runs 24-7? It runs 24-7. Uh, generally, depending on how much water came down and what materials are affected, it can take anywhere between three and five days, depending on how, much, how many machines we can run in that one area to force that drying. Sometimes it could extend to seven to ten days if there's wood studs and we need to get to those studs to start drying them out properly. And, you know, it's interesting because some people don't get it. And some people say, oh, look, there's a couple of drops. I'm just going to get the paint that covers it yeah, and then paint over it and not know that internally there's a, there's a major problem. Right. Okay. Um, and then in three months later, it's going to be back again. You know, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a major cut. Right. Okay, it, it's just it's just a bandage, really. I got to ask you this. So, I guess when it comes to costs, it's going to depend on how long you have to be there and how much damage is done. Right. What's the biggest, not cost-wise, but what's the biggest job that you've seen, okay, in a house? Because, I mean, I know, I I remember being in a home in, when I lived in Jersey, and I open the door, and here comes a flood of water outside. Okay, so it basically covered almost my whole house. Right. Do you see a lot of that? We, we see it from time to time um, where people go out of town for a week and don't shut off the water or a pipe burst or water heater burst. Uh, they come home, and usually, like I said, within three days you can get mold. Uh, they're gone for a week. You can imagine the damages that they have inside. You know, when the whole house has to be... <coughs> pretty much good and it's funny because i opened the door and i'm serious i opened the door and here comes this flood of water wow. th out the front door and i was like oh my god and it was like you know up north we have really cold days and if you don't treat your stuff right. your pipes when you go away they're gonna burst exactly you yeah. know and people really don't get it in florida we don't have that issue but we do have the issue of heat right and a lot of air conditioners running and air conditioners have a tendency of leaking sometimes. Right. The condensation builds up. Um, I have a friend down here who had, <laughs> who had a 250-gallon fish tank built into the wall, Ooh. and it just exploded. Wow. Okay. It's a lot of water. <laughs> salt water. Yeah. Is salt water more difficult to take care of than fresh water? Well, you know, what's crazy about that is that salt water... Uh, I actually have a reef tank myself, okay. so uh, if you're familiar with how they operate, there's actually a lot of bacteria and stuff in that water that helps it thrive naturally. Right. Uh, so when a saltwater tank actually bursts, it's pretty much the same water condition category as if you had a sewer backup. It's a category three water loss. Anything that water touched pretty much has to be removed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Saltwater tank. Beautiful, but it's work. It can be costly. <laughs> it can be costly. Costly damages if, yeah. you, if you don't maintain that I, tank right. <laughs> we're getting to the top of the time. I say, how do people reach you? Have a website, phone number? Yeah, we have a website, and uh, we also have an 800 number. It's 800-807-9291, uh, and uh, our website is www.aquaseekers.com. Yeah, and you can't miss that truck. It's it's just really pretty and really bright and kind of shiny. With that, Jose, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Everybody will be right back.